our scene opens with a bird's eye view as we look down at a street. Rain is falling gently onto the black pavement that glistens from the street lights. It's not raining hard, but the rain is cold, and it was one of those days where the skies were dark long before night fell. A car drives through the camera's view, and we follow it, slowly zooming in to the interior. Josephine, please tell us who we see driving the vehicle, <laughs> and how is their vibe as they're driving toward the site that they were called to? Tense, messy car. <laughs> Filled with smoke because the window is only slightly cracked to let smoke out of the cigarette that they are smoking currently. Um, they're unkempt, disheveled. They have like a dress shirt on and I'd say like a loose tie. And the, the hair is a mess and there are papers scattered everywhere. Like the mess that's in the car is just documents, files, old files, you know, just all over the place. Uh, they have dark uh like dark brown hair that's about uh well let's say it's short kind of like my current cut but a dark dark color and a little sh a little shaggier and they've got sort of uh perpetual like half closed lids of disdain on their face at all times <laughs> Uh, they're lean, they're very toned, like, they clearly, like, stay in shape. They're not, like, they haven't, like, um, yeah, they're clearly on top of sort of their physical, uh, dexterity, at least, and ability, but, yeah. And it's, like, there's a few tattoos going down the arms that, like, peek out from the rolled-up sleeves that we see. We... Are kind of zoomed in to see this appearance and then as the camera kind of pulls back a little bit more we see the car pull up to a curb and we see still looking at them we see the flashing red and blue lights on their face uh from the police car lights reflecting and as you're kind of moving to get out of the car the camera shifts over to the other side of the street where we see another car already parked on the curb and we see our second character as she is looking out of the window to watch the scene and wait for the rest of the team to arrive. Um, Cynthia, please tell us who we're seeing as the camera kind of comes in and zooms into this car to look at you. Mm -hmm. um, you also see a very uh, dark haired individual, um, big curly hair, bangs pulled back into a very tight tight low ponytail um mm -hmm. makeup is very very meticulously put on like lips are on point she has a <laughs> very full buttoned up shirt all the way to the neck tie is in a triple like rose knot sort of deal so like everything's just like clean sharp like the white shirt is as crispy white like when you first buy it her sleeves are rolled up like three quarters, but like perfect, like creases. Everything is pristine in her car. Like it's as if it was a brand new car, but her agents know she's had the car for a while. She's just super meticulous, super organized. And I'll, I'll say you could probably figure out she was very much born into a military family that like everything is orderly and perfect. Um, yeah, so she's kind of staring out. She sees the other car pull up and kind of like notes who that was. She looks down at her watch, kind of raises an eyebrow, and kind of just assesses the situation outside um, with her hand to her chin. I and... love that this is like the exact opposite physical description. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Tension messy, yeah. <laughs> uptight, pristine. It was like talk, hard yeah. rock music and it switched over to like classical. Yeah. Oh, yeah. There's definitely there's definitely some Mozart playing playing in the background. Probably one of my favorite <laughs> favorite songs. She you also tell she's very Latina. Like I just wanted to point that across. Like if mm -hmm. if there's any sort of attitude she's throwing, is that very <laughs> like hard Latina, like, mm. Okay. Remarkable. <laughs> I think um I think the two of you lock eyes from like across the street and uh you know that if Max has made it, then Agent Bliss is already here somewhere. Oh, uh, yes. I sh should have mentioned character name Max Stone, Agent Raziel. 
Oh yeah, I should name do that too. <laughs> uh, age age so Layla, aka Sonia Briggs. Yes. Um, also, you would notice that she has a broken diamond ring on her finger. That's the only oh. thing that's not pristine. Yeah, I think I think the camera like sees that as it's resting on the uh, like um, steering wheel, and then you see each other from across the street, and you know that the third agent's here somewhere because Max is always the last one here. Uh, mm, yeah. <laughs> I'm gonna get out the car. Layla's gonna put up, um, she has a, um, suspenders, pulls the suspenders on. You kind of see her kind of shuffle her gear, put her, um, jacket on. And she's actually wearing a skirt as opposed to my, like, other agents would be wearing pants. She wears the skirt. Mm -hmm. Um, but she's wearing, uh, like, comfortable, like, high heel boots that are kind of combat looking, so to speak. Uh, but she gets, you know, all of her gear ready and she, like, closes the door, locks it, and kind of leans against the car, knowing that Max takes a lot longer to get out. <laughs> we'll just sit and wait until Max, or Agent Raziel, gets out. Yeah. Max just, like, slowly, like, lets the, brings the window down of the car and, like, smoke just, like, billows out. Just sort of airs it out. <clears throat> And doesn't get out of the car, just sort of shouts across the street at Agent Layla, like, Is Agent Bliss here? What do you think? You know you're the, always the last one to show up, so yes, Agent Bliss is already here. Okay. You know you're ten minutes late, right? The window just slowly rolls back <laughs> up. And then, like, a mo moments later, I get out, like, put out that cigarette, start a new one, and then walk over. <clears throat> you know? Offic officially 13 now. 13 minutes late. We are 13 minutes behind. Yeah, but I can count on you to keep track. So, you know what we're doing here? And I think uh... at that, uh, our camera whooshes over to uh, kind of um, behind probably a couple other police cars on the other side, uh, we see our third character. Um, she has just finished talking with the officer that's kind of in charge of the scene and has collected some information. Lexi, who do we see as you kind of, you're hearing your teammates behind you. You know that they have arrived and you know you have some information to give them. Who do yeah. we see? You see Agent Bliss. Agent Bliss is kind of like, on the younger side of middle-aged, a uh, very tall uh, black woman, hair shaved, uh, no earrings, but has like clamps on her ears just to imply like you look and you see that like flash of fashion. Um, <laughs> very, she knows that in this moment she has to look like an official. So you see that she's got a jacket that is the exact same shade as like an FBI uh no I think that she's gonna be wearing a doctor's coat like a doctor's coat more specifically um but it looks more like like a pea coat uh and she's got mm -hmm. a clipboard and some books in her hands um a bunch of rings all over her fingers that just it's a little bit more fashionable than a doctor should be, but she's pushing the border on this at all times. Um, underneath the doctor's coat, just this beautiful like fisherman's sweater keeping her warm um, that has little tears in it. Like just the exact opposite, like implying the meticulous crispness of Agent Lay Layla and then the kind of coming apartness of this beautiful sweater uh, and the rest of her look is kind of implying towards Agent Ra Raziel. Um, and as she stands there, you do notice like the books in her, like under her arm, are they are journals um they are kind of it, they're books in different languages that as you look at them further your eyes are probably prone to drift away to be like oh that's too boring for me <laughs> keep moving <laughs> uh, and that's kind of the person that you see and she's just standing there assuring the officers like yes of course we can we will have this taken care of as soon as possible um, my my agents are back there. They're actually walking up now. Uh, and I think that as I'm saying that, I am very much 
trying to slight like I think I want to text both of them and be like make sure you have your jackets your FBI jackets <laughs> like um, right yeah uh hey do you have mine I threw it in the back of your car last time because I didn't want to wash it yes yes I have it and I pull it out um out of a dry cleaning bag with like the hanger like it's like perfect <laughs> yeah great and just like quickly grab that throw it on <clears throat> yeah it smells nice you know, I picked lavender flavor just for you. Hmm. All right. And After you. Yeah, I think we see our three characters, like, coming together. And um, as Agent Bliss is kind of beginning mm -hmm. to explain what's happening, the camera pulls back for the first time. It's been very... Um, very zoomed in on the people themselves and the conversations that are happening. But for the first time, the camera pulls back and we see the view before us. We see police cars and fire trucks, ambulances, roadblocks, and a crowd that's like surrounding the barriers around this building. We see a very, very old apartment building and it looks like it stands three stories high. The bricks look old and weathered, but it's a little hard to tell right now because they are in the process of putting plastic down every side of the building, quarantining this building off, dropped down from the rooftops. Um, the entire apartment building has been quarantined and armed officers stand guard around it at this point. You see sick and scared looks across their faces and you stand there, the only three people in the area that might actually be prepared for what's really going on inside. <clears throat> That's literally what I do when we walk out. Yeah, I drop a very long um, briefcase looking type thing. It I emphasis on long. <laughs> he just kind of drops it. Yeah. Bliss? Layla? Um, and Max. Uh, Liz, oh, sorry. Liz, <clears throat> um, yeah, come on. Sorry. Guys, we it's a, have... it, new call sign. We're getting used to it. Yeah. We're... We have about three hours, so I will not hesitate on, you know, letting you know what's going on here. The police and fire, you know, firefighters, and I'm looking around. I'm, like, looking around and kind of talking about these people while not directly looking. Um, <laughs> but just trying to make sure you both know. Um, the police, the firefighters, they're waiting on the FBI. Uh, and that is who we are today for the next three hours. We need to be in and out before the actual FBI gets here. Roger that. Okay, in and out of what? What have you gotten us into this time? This beautiful building, and I am going to turn and look at this apartment building. Um, and essentially, there have just been bizarre residents uh, kind of stumbling about, going on walks, but when the police arrived, it was blocked from the inside. It was essentially, yeah, it, everything was blocked from the inside. Um, they went in and were able to unblock it, but essentially the residents were just being very unnatural. Um, and we... Have about three hours to figure out if that's, if it's just some weird, you know, stomach virus going around or if it's something far, far worse. Hmm. Have we identified any entry points? Um, we have, I believe, the front door. Like I said, they <laughs> went in and they went in and unblocked it, but apparently everyone that went in, they lost contact with. So some, they're going to uh... be letting us through the front doors. We were great detective work that led us to the front door. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, that was all me. <clears throat> uh, good job, great job, Agent yeah. Bliss. Um, all right. So, well, maybe maybe there's like a chemical being, you know, sometimes gas leaks, what have you. Maybe Do they're just have... getting agitated or something. Do we have any point of contact with it in the building that's reported this, or is this just based off police reports? based off police reports everyone who goes in they immediately lost contact with yeah and who knows how reliable those are yeah all right <clears throat> sounds simple enough 
directly in our ballpark. So should be a quick, easy job. That's uh, like it. Yeah, I'll, we said uh, that about our last mission. Yeah, let's not let's not talk about the last mission. <clears throat> I'm gonna pull out some PPE gear. <laughs> Some nice. like masks and things. I sort of like, I always have this. I mean, I'm sure Dr. Cecilia does too, but mm -hmm. I'm uh, very uh, on the protective gear and uh, sort of like hand them to each of us. Here's some masks. Of course, I've got, you know, some more heavy duty shit if we need it. But... Mm -hmm. um, as always, after you two. Such a kindness. Put the mask over my face. Just menacingly uh, walk into this building through the front door. Yeah, you see the uh, the officers. They they have just this weird, almost scared look across their faces as they're kind of like escorting you to the door. And they are masked up as well as they're walking up to the door itself, just in case. And they open the door just enough to let the three of you in. And um, as soon as you are inside, the doors are closed and locked back behind you. Um, Jeez. The plastic Sorry. covers, the plastic cover goes over the door once again. Uh, and inside the building looks just as old, if not older than it does on the outside. You see very old, light fixtures, um, intricately designed trim along the walls and like the door frames. And you currently stand in a lobby with a staircase that goes up sort of like Titanic style to the next mm -hmm. floor. Um, the check-in desk is on the left along with a few doors that you assume are like storage or utility closets. And then you see there is a elevator to the right before a hallway that has one door on each side you see no movement or people. Uh, and you do see a kind of pool of blood with a drag trail down the hallway to one oh. of the closed doors. Okay. Yeah, Le Layla drops to a knee and starts opening up her um, her very large briefcase and starts assembling her rifle. <laughs> yeah, okay, what the hell? I thought, I thought we were... Okay, how aggressive are we talking here? I have only the details I was given. I don't know... I, how how fresh does the blood look? <laughs> uh, do you have anything in forensics? I believe I uh, do. The the sounds of the building are kind of like slowly creaking in is the best way to describe it. Like the building is very, very old. There are creaks happening everywhere mm. between like wood sounds, metal sounds. Um, yeah. And you do hear the constant pinging of something. You're not sure uh, if it's the second floor or the third floor, but you hear a constant ting. So you two investigate the blood. I'm gonna see maybe if there's there's a check-in desk. Maybe there's some records of who's moved in most recently, mm. or any complaints that have been lodged. Yeah, sure. That sounds good. Um, I'm gonna yeah take out my Kali sticks from my backpack just to have them in hand. I'll sort of like put them through a loop. I don't try to walk around with them out because it seems a little strange out in the street. But I've got like a little holder on my at my waist for them that I stick them into. Uh, yeah, hopefully we're not gonna need this. Um, oh, and I look at you assembling your <laughs> gun right now. I'm like, it's that already that there. Seem excessive and so whatever. You know Do what? Do you not remember what happened last time? I, I I fucking remember. Okay. Um, I'm gonna look at the blood. Yeah. yeah, Layla's gonna put her her boot like the front of her boot leg on it and smear it to see if it's slippery. Go ahead and roll forensics on the blood. I missed it by three. <laughs> wow, yeah, oh. I epically failed like ninety seven on my. <laughs> oh, I got a fifty three and mine is a at a fifty. Amazing. Mine so... is really high, so this is just stupid of me. But I, but you know what? We're at the beginning of this, and I'm doing the bare minimum. I don't even get down. <laughs> like I'm, I'm standing, looking like, yeah, you know. Cecilia told us to look at the blood. I'm looking at the blood. Yeah. yeah. Blood. Sonia just literally puts her boot in it to try to smear it. Like that's as much of like identification. Like, is it wet? If it like is recent, or if it's dry and it's it's not recent. There is. 
there is an interesting result because as you step on it and smear it, it it's more of the consistency of mud. Um, mm. And it does smear. It's like it's like uh, paint that has been out for a while and has that like hardened top layer. So maybe it's not even blood. You're you're not sure. Hmm. What is this? Normal. Yeah. Not sure. Is it weird? <clears throat> yeah, you want to taste it. <laughs> Don't tempt me with a good time. Um I Are think we fucking that... vampires here? Like what the hell? <laughs> We're not tasting no fucking blood here. I'm Sometimes... an anthropologist. I've I've tasted a lot of things most people wouldn't like think to yes, taste. One that and Agent Layla, sometimes I think you might be. Let's be honest. What? No one's that okay. perfect. Thanks for coming. I'm just perfect. saying. Uh, <laughs> Liz, anything in those records? Yeah, I'm thumbing through. I'm looking for complaints that have been lodged recently. Looking for most, re- like, people that might have moved in that have, like, <laughs> like a John Smith kind of name. Um, <laughs> and just anything that if I owned the apartment or had to run the front desk, things I'd be like scribbling down or like anything okay. like that. Go ahead and make a search roll. You will get basic information regardless, but the search roll will be kind of seeing if you get anything extra. Let's go. 14, so I succeed. Okay. Yeah. I so, was 41. <laughs> I was like, <laughs> you see um, like the logbook itself, many of the apartments are deemed um, unlivable. Uh, whether they were, um, you know, closed for maintenance and just never got repaired. Um, a lot of them are not lived in. The few that are, uh, you can kind of note down those names. None of them really sound familiar to you until you get to, until you're looking at the person that moved in the most recently. Uh, name is John Forbes, which is not, <laughs> is not, is not... Is not Super weird, but the initials JF are typically used for very, very specific, strange cover name cases that you have found in the past. JF, John Forbes, um, Jack Frost, you've seen before. Mm -hmm. Uh, Jeremiah Fletcher has been one of them. Mm -hmm. So it could be nothing, but... It does mm. kind of raise a little bit of a red flag. Um. Uh, I'll take the picture of the photo ID with me and just show it to them and hold up the piece of paper and just say, okay, uh, we've got an alias case, I think. Someone, the person who most recently moved in. They just, you know, have one of those names. Mm. Um, What's the name? John Forbes. And there, you, there is a photo as well? Yes. The, yeah, yeah. I, I just sort of clock the physical description and what they look like mm-hmm. before I sort of like wave it off. I'm like, okay, all right. Uh, we'll keep that in mind. Uh, I don't, I don't, I don't like it. I don't like it. Every time there's a, those JF names, I don't, mm-hmm. I don't like this. Um, and despite myself trying to act like I'm not, uh, working too hard. I'm going to take this moment to like clock this whole area for like foot footprints or <laughs> um, signs of uh, tussle or, you know, like especially around this puddle and just, you know, scratch marks, anything uh, sort of just do a quick glance around. <clears throat> yeah. Um, looking around you, you don't like the desk isn't in like disarray or anything. Uh, all of the doors seem intact and fine the door that this weird trail leads into is closed the other door is cracked open um and that is the only door down here that doesn't seem to be closed um no real sign of struggle down here uh you even see like it looks like it hasn't been cleaned in a while you see like cobwebs in corners and um dust in places Mm. 
Okay. No, no uh, footsteps around this dragged. Okay. No. Um, I'm gonna get down and smell it. Mm. Okay. Uh, you finally like okay, crouch down. Yeah. Yeah. No, it's very begrudgingly. <laughs> like... Yeah. Uh, it smells like blood. Hmm. Well, I smell iron, so I guess it's just gross blood. I don't know. Is this what blood looks like, Doctor? Um, this... You said it's thick consistency of paint, but yes. it's that deep red, and it smells like iron. I mean, it could just be congealed, I guess. I don't... I'm not really sure. Are there viruses, diseases, you know, things that do that? Tons. Okay. But right. This... It just... Uh, I feel like we would find... Maybe we should follow it? I. Yeah. For sure. Already on top of that, Sonya's already, like, starting to follow the path. Oh, wait, but there's that, like, dinging we're hearing, right? Is that yeah. coming from up? Or upstairs? Yes. Okay. Um... I'm just going to, and you said it's like the the stairs, like Titanic style, up middle. But then, are there more stairs that go further up? Like, how's the um, that we can see? Yes, like you can see this going up, and then you mm -hmm. see another set going up the other way to the, the third other, floor. Okay, mm. so like yes, like it zigzags up above us. Yeah. Um, dope. Uh, but does it how about how far away does it sound? Is there a way to like um, I'm gonna try and guesstimate that? You you suspect it's on the second floor. Okay, like it's just above us. Yeah. Okay. And it's just this constant ting. It's definitely like some sort of metal on metal. Yeah. Uh, I I don't like that. First of all, it's creepy. Second of all, I am making up a lot of things in my head that it could be, and I don't like. I don't like them. It might just be a door swinging open and shut. I hope it's that. Is this bothering anyone? Just me? I tuned it out a little bit ago, but we can go check. I feel like we just need to start yes, moving yeah, through yeah, the yeah, building. Yeah, okay. yeah let's just, uh, would, let's do it. I think we should start on ground floor and work our way up, regardless of sound. We have a trail here of blood, and we should follow the path. Okay, 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 okay. Okay, all right, sure. Mm. All right, sure. Ting! Ting! Uh, yeah, <laughs> I, I'm like, and I'm just like twitching every time <laughs> the ting is going if you off. if you need these and i pull from my pocket i have a set of like earphones that like go in your they're not they don't actually ever play music but it's just to literally mm -hmm. drown out everyone else if if you need them you want to take away one of my senses in this now creepy abandoned well what this is creepy building i don't know no, if it's I'm abandoned good. but good. okay okay i'll put them back in my pocket all right uh, um uh, yeah, let's make our way. Do we go towards the door that has the dragged mm -hmm. blood? Agent Layla. You... Blood? I think you should go first, it? Layla. You have the gun. <laughs> Noted. Yep. Um, gonna do a cross step, so she's crossing her legs every time she's she's moving. Has the gun ready. I kind of in scope, but, you know, for camera's sake, she has it lower so you can see her face. Um, and, uh, <laughs> I'm assuming door is in front of her. Yep, follow up that trail, get to the door. And I'm just like rolling my eyes the entire time watching her do this like very tactical <laughs> approach as I just Truly. like casually walking behind, like kind of sort Stepping of kicking, over the kicking blood. it some <laughs> dust and like stuff on the way. <sighs> awesome. Instead of kicking the door, I'm going to first put my hand on the... Um, Doorknob. There we go. That's a word. Doorknob. It's in the morning today. I love, um, I love that you started with instead of kicking the door, like that's the norm, <laughs> though. <laughs> that would be the norm, but it's morning time. So we're going to go with a slight, like, opening of the doorknob. She's going to tap it to see if there's anything that happens first, just in case. Just tapping the doorknob itself? Yeah, like making sure there's nothing on the doorknob, anything weird that would happen. Yeah, uh, seems fine. And when you go to turn it, it turns. It's not locked. Cool. Oh, I'm uh, right before you do, though, I'm like, oh, wait, here, gloves. Mm. Thank I'm you. i give you a set of gloves. Thank you. And those um, all around, too. Yeah, put the gloves on. And then all I'm right. going to open the door. Okay, uh, you 
open up the door and you see it's opening up. It's the pool room. Um, you see an empty pool with like the pool lights on the inside, you know, kind of just making the water glisten all across the ceiling and the walls. And you see this trail leads over um, along the side, not in the water or anything, just along the side of the pool to a person that you see is sitting up against the wall. Uh, he looks, he's acting hurt, um, but you don't see any obvious wounds on him from here. Okay, so I'm going to put my back ag up against the door to allow the other two to come in and gun focus on individual, but I'm going to let them take the lead here. Okay. Oh, shit. Come on. Uh, come on, Bliss. I, like, grab the doctor, like, we gotta go help him. No. Wait a second. No? God, you're the weirdest fucking doctor I've ever met. <laughs> I'm not that kind of doctor. Right, um, right, and I'm gonna... Let's forget. Look, I, you said that they're not injured. Like, they, they, they look like they're feigning injury. They, they look like... Possibly. They look like yeah. they're hurt, but you're not seeing wounds on them. But the trail does lead to them. I'll uh, make sure that uh, Agent Raziel is not going forward, and then I'll say... God damn it. <laughs> Excuse me? Are you in need of assistance? At the sound of your voice, the head kind of twitches a little bit, and he looks over. Uh, you see... A man, very skinny, kind of mid-twenties, um, he is shaking like he's freezing. He's acting like he's freezing, but you see sweat on his face, and he looks over at you and he says, It hasn't gotten you yet, but it will. Would, when did it get you? And he's like looking around the room. He spots uh, Agent Layla on the other side. Spots doesn't seem to take any fear from the gun or anything. There's kind of this, like, distant look in his eyes. Like, he's seeing you, but he's seeing through you. And he just shakes his head. Time doesn't, time doesn't matter. Not here. Not anymore. And you see him kind of starting to just rock a little bit. Okay, yeah, so clearly something's fucking getting some, what? Why do they always say it's gonna get us? I mean, some, some sort of, like, I don't know, airborne virus? I don't know, what is this? You... <clears throat> what, what, can we save you? Is there anything we can do to help? Are you... Are you bleeding? Are you... Is, is something broken? Can we help you get out? The entrance is right there. He, you hear a little, like, chuckle. Like, he's like... <laughs> We're all just nails, you know? And he's moving like he's gonna try to stand up. We're all just nails, nails that have been hammered in all crooked, and it's here to rip us out. And he's just looking over at you the whole time as he's standing up with, like, shaky legs. Who's here? Who's here? It started with the dust, spores, or something. Everyone was coughing and staggering around, and I wish it stopped with the coughing. And he's still just, like, smiling and, like, kind of holding his shivering self but then came the nightmares. You'd have them when you were awake. See, see things that aren't really there, and things that aren't really happening, things from somewhere else, but they would feel real, and they'd look real, and sometimes they'd even hurt real. And he kind of like looks down at the trail of blood that has led to him and stopped. They aren't gonna let us out of here. Who's they? Uh, it's a, a thing. It's a thing. I, once you see it, you know, it's, it's too late. The people outside, they're not going to let you out of here either. You were dead the moment you stepped in because you're all infected now. Yeah, yeah okay, we're getting out of here. It's, it's, okay. <clears throat> have you seen Have you seen things? What are the... Could you point us in the direction? What are the things... What are the things that you're talking about? Yeah, what are you seeing right now? At that, you see him looking at, like, every corner of the room. And he even, like, looks into the pool and closes his eyes as if, like, there's too much bad in the pool. 
and he just shakes his head, closes his eyes, and he says, we're just nails. We're just nails. And you see he uh. reaches back behind him, and he brandishes a hammer. And he's just kind of, like, holding it in his hand. And he, maybe if I help it. And he kind of looks up to you and says, help no, 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 it no, no, rip no. out the crooked. No, 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 no. Die. No, no, no. Yeah, no, no. Die. no. If you move any closer, <laughs> I will shoot. Well, I think he's going to hammer himself, really. But yeah, I, I gonna, die. Yeah. Uh, I think it, I feel like Agent Raziel would before me with the <laughs> the recklessness. Um, <laughs> I think we're yeah. both there. Um, we're both in there for sure. Well, yeah. especially if you were holding me back, we're both now suddenly yeah. we're both lunging towards this guy. Okay, so as you are like pushing towards this guy, Agent Layla is like waiting to take uh, safely. Obviously, um, <laughs> you 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 see the lunging, so you're not immediately gonna fire, but yeah. you're still you're still keeping an eye on your teammates here. Yep. Um, so let's go ahead and what would you like to roll for this? Is this, are you going more of like a using a melee weapon sort of deal to try to like grip it away from him? Or are you doing pure like athletics for this? What would you like to use to try mm. to stop this guy? Yeah, I would like to use like some sort of unarmed combat to disarm him just to take, to try and grab the hammer from him. Okay, um, what about Agent Bliss? I think skills wise, uh... I just, I feel like this is more of a sense thing for, like, I don't think that Cecilia knows what she's going to do when she gets to him other than, like, try to yank it away. But I think that this is, like, more of an alertness thing for her, where she's just, like, get, like on top of her senses and diving towards a thing without knowing what's going to happen next. Sure. Yeah, and, and having worked together, maybe it's like, you know, I'll do the sort of tactical disarm, so maybe you're just holding the other arm, you know, like, catching the yeah. other. Yeah, yeah. Truly, awesome. uh, I'll go for the other arm. Like, just yeah. <laughs> you can't, you can't have that much force. Okay, so how I would love to do this is I would like for you both to roll something. If you both succeed, I won't even roll. I just fail. Okay. If one of you fails, <laughs> I will roll against the one that succeeded. Nice. Okay. Cool. All right. Okay, I succeeded. I failed. All right. So what was your uh, what was your success? 47. When when we're rolling against each other in this kind of way, is it the same as like Thulu where when it's it's the highest one who succeeded that's Yes. Okay. Yes. And I rolled a 15%. So I succeeded, but you rolled higher. Okay, awesome. So, awesome. um what does this look like? As as you both begin diving, uh, you see him holding the hammer. As he looks up and sees you diving, he immediately like raises it to try to defend himself. Uh, so it does look like he has like shifted okay. and is going to swing at you as you approach. What does this look like? Here's the problem. I just go into muscle memory, and sometimes I go a little too overboard. And what it looks like is I rush towards, and as he raises it up, I turn my body into his, grab it from behind, and flip him over my shoulder, but have the hammer left in my arms. Which was maybe a little overkill, but that was like the most effective way to get it out of his hands quickly. And would love to have him just, yeah, splayed out in front of us. Amazing. So, all of you watch as he is flipped over. Uh, you successfully like get the hammer from his hand. As he has flipped over and as he slams into the ground, you see a smattering of the strange red <laughs> liquid. Um, there is no longer a body there. It is just this no! liquid oh, that completely. spreads out. Yes. Um, and I will need all of you to make a sanity roll for that, please. <laughs> How dare. Oh. Okay. Cool. We can do this. We can do this. Yeah. Yeah. It's yeah. cool. Yeah. This is can't be worse than last time. Mm, okay. Oh, I I'm just rolled a 99. <laughs> a critical failure with a hammer in your hands? <laughs> I mean, look, I, well, I'm the one responsible for having just splat a human, so it might affect me a little differently considering I was just disarming him. That's all I was doing. I was just yeah. disarming him. And then, oh, God. I mean, you, your character could react in any way that they want. You just don't lose sanity as you see this. Um, Max is going to lose four points okay. of sanity for this. Yeah, I think so. As the body lands, 
I'm just like, ah, what the fuck? What? Bliss? What the fuck have you gotten us into? You said this was. This, who does this? This isn't. I, this isn't a real thing. This is the disease. What? God, damn it! Not again. This I'm is our job. Like, this is our. I think immediately, like you're kind of getting very emotional, and I'm just gonna through line. Like this is our job. This is what we're here to do. We couldn't save him, but. We can save everyone else. Can we? What the? We don't even know what this is. We're not prepared for this. Oh, God. And I think Agent I just start pacing. Yeah. Agent like, Layla, is... are you okay? I'm perfectly fine. I'm trying to tune in actually to the sound of the tinging to see if that's still happening when, that, when the body flattens. <laughs> oh, God. It absolutely is still happening, yes. Does it go any faster? Does it stop at the same pace? Yeah, no change. Do I hear any other sounds outside? Not currently. Okay, so nothing was disturbed when the body flattened. Great. That's what I'm trying to check. So I, my eyes are going to set in on Raziel. Um, and if they continue with their manic stuff, mm -hmm. I'm going to go over to Raziel and like basically like, <laughs> get a hold of yourself. Ugh. Last time you lost your cool, do you remember what happened? Uh, yeah, I remember what happened. Get a hold of yourself. We're here for a mission. And she steps back, looks down at the like flattened body, and then kind of moves away from the pool. I don't know how many times I have to say, these are not the missions I want to sign up for. Whatever. Yeah. Agreed. This is our last time we're doing this. We're here now. Okay. All we can do is finish this. I And as the dinging is like going and I'm just like sort of twitching each I'm just like, God damn it! I it's still going and I just like walk out as if I'm heading up the stairs. Layla shoots a look to Bliss because, like, I, I feel like Ray, like Raziel and Layla have a, like a really deep connection. She just looks at Bliss like, "What'd you get us into?" And kind of like <laughs> the whole starts following Raziel. Um, I think Bliss is gonna take one last look at the blood, and then one last. I think she's gonna look at the pool, like where the person's eyes kept going towards. And I'm just going to start <laughs> walking if I can, if that happens. <laughs> I'm just going to start walking if I can. Walking, like, out of the room or towards the pool? Towards the pool. Okay. Um, go ahead and make an alertness roll for me. Hey. Ooh, five. Uh, nice. So that's a success. Yeah. Okay. Um, looking at the pool, the water, you know, as it's just kind of like just little ripples you know when something's like under the water how it's kind of distorted a little bit mm -hmm. you're almost seeing as if there was like a 2d image um and it kind of changes every time the water ripples through and you're looking and for a moment it's only there for half a second you swear you see a person as if they're standing in the pool but they're completely submerged Looking up at you, you see an all black suit, very, very pale, almost gray face, and a bald head. And you're thinking you see the top of the head at first, and then you kind of blink and look in a little bit further, and you're noticing they are looking straight at you. And it almost looks like a porcelain mask has been, like, melted into the face itself. Like, there, oh. there are no eyes, there's no mouth um it's just a faceless looking up at you and there is this intense moment of shock in your spine like this intense fear this heat that takes over you almost like this is familiar you've never seen this before but this is so familiar to you but then you blink and all of it's gone the fear is gone the image is gone. It's just a pool. I 
think. <laughs> so you're having a great time. <laughs> yeah. Uh, summer fun. Uh, I think I'm going to reach into, like, underneath my doctor's coat. I just have, like, a holster with a gun that I cannot use, <laughs> that I don't know how to use. <laughs> and I'm going to just for, like, scientist safekeeping put one bullet into the pool where I thought it was. <laughs> and just like, okay, there's no way it can reach me. This is great. You're shooting off a gun. Yeah, I just shot a gun. <laughs> and we're just yeah. like the two of you are at like exiting the room. You think Bliss is right yeah. behind you and you hear Pop! And What the I think at that moment like Bliss just turns and walks and meets you out the door. Like you heard a gunshot, I'm there. <laughs> what what the fuck? What was that? Nothing. From like halfway up the stairs. I'm like, was that you? Yeah, yeah. Why? Target practice? I don't know. Uh, okay, whatever. I'm like beelining up the stairs. Let me see what your gun. Fuck. Is what? this fucking sound? It's... Come here, Bliss. Let me I, see your I gun. give you my light pistol. <laughs> give me your gun. I'll also, give it back to you. Six bullets left. <laughs> I like check the chamber. I'm like, I'm gonna fill her bullet, the one that she used, close it back up. Do not use this unless it's an emergency. Do you remember what happened last time? Yes, I still have the bandages on. Uh, okay. And I grab the gun and put it back in the holster. <laughs> um, as I was like, what the fuck was that? I'm still holding the hammer that I took. It's like gripped in my hand. <laughs> and I'm like, whatever. And then run up. Yeah. Yeah, and as we begin moving upstairs, I think Agent Bliss, there's a moment target practice just kind of like rings in your head. And we have one little flashback. Um I would <laughs> like I would like for you to tell us um a little scene with uh Bliss and her brother um at target practice. You see the two of us, and we're not at a gun range, like a place that is like an actual building built for it. It's this dark forest. It's a backyard, like a dark forest with a target, um, just like red and white rings. And we're shooting a gun at hay bales um, because it's just safer that way. Um, and you see we're both wearing like the sound gear. We're both wearing these chunky kind of hoodies uh fluorescent light um kind of standing out in the forest but it is as bright as our sweatshirts are hoodies are it is extremely dark around us like we've been doing this for hours um and i just say to him you see a slightly taller uh agent hollow who uh he's about as lean as i am um, and you see that when he fires, he's precise. Like, this is something that he's good at. And something that I say to him, I just say, Okay, I, you found it. The one thing that you're better than me at. <sighs> Stupid thing is clunky. I hate it. And I think that that is just a fast, um, constant fire, like, emptying the entire fucking... Yeah, whole round. Yeah. Gone. Yeah, because he has found the one thing that he's better than you at. Yeah. That's why you've been here for so long. Yeah. Can we please be done here? And he's just like not responding at first, but <laughs> I think he finally he finally says, We can be done when you hit the target and he hands you the gun one more time. I haven't done it all day. It's been five hours. What makes you think I'm gonna do it now? He just pats his watch and is like, waiting. Fine. I will take his gun, lift it, and tr fire off one shot. Go ahead and roll, um, what is it called in this game? Firearms? <laughs> yeah, firearms. I don't yeah. have anything so in it's, firearms. So it's 20%. It's 20%. Then. Jeez. You got this. 73. Fail. <laughs> <laughs> love that um yeah i think it chips off a piece of a tree behind it like 
way far, like high above and behind. I'm like, fine, I didn't do it. You win. This is incredible. And then I feel like it just kind of fades out as um as he's just like, okay, one 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 more time. You have to hit it once, and it just kind of like fades out um back into this current scene. Mm-hmm. We are heading up to the second floor, correct? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Be lining. Okay. I'm like running. Yeah. Um, I'm and pissed. I... <laughs> this noise is getting on my nerves. Yeah. Yeah, you just hear this constant clink, clink, clink. And as you come up uh, over like the top of the staircase and are looking over, the second floor seems to be like the actual like apartments themselves. Mm-hmm. You see many doors. A lot of them are like blocked off. Uh, you see a lot of um closed signs on them like some of them are just plain doors but you see as you're kind of looking down the hallway you see one person uh one woman is standing with a frying pan in her hand but she is clinking it against literally like the railing that goes along uh the side of these the next set of stairs like she's not heading up them or anything she's just clinking the frying pan on the stairs, just staring at it as if something is happening. Hey, lady! You want to maybe cool it for a bit? She does stop at your voice and look over. Are you here to help us? Yeah, we're here to help. Yeah. We? And she's, like, looking around, and I think around that time, um, Agent Layla kind of comes up over the stairs, too. She's like, oh, have you seen your ending yet? My, what? My ending? Is it? Is that what you said? Yes, your ending. Have you seen it? Uh, no. Uh, and I <laughs> don't like what I'm imagining you're suggesting. Wh- Where did you see yours? The basement. And she just kind of smiles and says, do you ever wonder where you go when you dream? Uh, yeah, I try and try not to dwell too much on it. You know, my therapist says it's not <clears throat> good to read too far into the dreams, but uh, which what? what? Yeah, she's she's nodding and then seems to just shift completely and says, "When you look into a mirror." And you're noticing, like, she's looking over at you. But again, it's like she's looking through you. She's not looking into your eyes. She's looking in your direction. And she says, when you look into a mirror in the dark, how do you know what's really on the other side? Ping! 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 I'm going to catch her hand as it comes down for, like, the last ting. Stop. Ma'am. Could we, um cut the sound for a bit. I don't think this is achieving anything. She kind of looks down as if to be like, what do you mean? I've done so much, even though you don't see whatever it is that she's seeing. She's like looking down. Oh. What do you, what do you see? My ending. Right here? Yes. And she's looking around, and I think around this time Agent Bliss is kind of making her way up as well. I um, I, I want to say Agent Bliss stopped at the mirror, the mirror thing. I think I stop on the stairs. I don't think I'm coming all the way up. Yeah. I just turned to, to Bliss and... Yeah. Gun trained on the woman, though. <laughs> Ma'am, do you, um... Do you take any medications by chance? Is there anything that you holding have used in the past? Yeah, I'm just holding her wrist this whole time. No. And you see her looking like into the frying pan as if she sees something else. And then she starts whispering to it. Um, she starts whispering things about, don't go upstairs. It's waiting. When you look into the mirror, it's waiting. I think we're all dead already. Don't you? And she's saying it to the frying pan. Not to you. Okay. Um, I'm just going to gently remove the frying pan from her hand. 
Yeah, she's like squeezing it, and there's this moment yeah. where you have to actually like pry like, her fingers, pry the fingers off of yeah. it. Yeah, and as soon as you do, she kind of like almost seems to like snap into something else, and she says, "Oh, I got you a gift." And she turns and uh, begins walking over to the apartment door directly opposite of where she was hitting on the staircase. Okay. Um, you see I'm her going... like opening oh. up the door. I'm gonna turn back and walk back to my to the other age, at least to be able to see you guys on the stairs or wherever you stopped, and be like, "Hey, uh, I know you're not that kind of doctor, but you don't have any like anti psych meds or anything like that on you, do you?" I can. What? I mean, if she's just, you know, I can deal with people for the most part. I don't know. I'd say, you know, it seems like she's having some sort of, like, psychosis right now. I don't really know if... And I'm thinking, you watch her get that, like, thousand-yard stare, and she's going to say, I don't know if she's really our biggest problem here. So it maybe seems we... like they're all saying the same thing, though. Yeah, she says she saw her ending, her ending that, you know what, it makes me feel like she sees, I don't know, maybe she saw she's gonna die, in her mind, in her mind. She thinks that's what she's seen, and uh, she just keeps flitting between what seems like different realities to her. Uh, and says, I'm gonna set down the frying pan, because now I have a hammer and a frying pan, yeah. I'm gonna set that down. <clears throat> but I'll, I'm You're like, having this whole conversation with a hammer yeah, in one yeah, hand yeah. and a frying pan in the other. But yeah. yeah, I put, I noticed and I'm like, I put down the, the frying pan. I'm still clutching the hammer though. That'll stay. Um, I, you know, something is, it's like the, the other guy, is she, is she also going to melt in front I of us? I don't know. I can, maybe I should just talk to her. Maybe she knows this John Forbes character as well. Yeah, okay. Why don't, why, don't, why don't you go talk to her? I'm not I'm not good with people anyway. I'll, I'll be right behind you guys. Um Layla kind of like is fiddling with something in her eye like she feels like like a piece of hair. She's going to go look in the mirror to like try to like get like something out of her eye real quick. I love that. Um <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, you know, that inevitably happens. You're trained and you're like, "Okay, hold on." <laughs> All right. So, uh yeah, Agent Layla immediately goes over. There's, like, one mirror in the hallway over here. You kind of, like, go over to start looking in that. Agent Bliss goes over to begin talking to this woman. Um, yeah, I'm following behind as well. Cool. Yeah. For, okay. With Agent Bliss, yeah. Yeah. Uh, I'm trying to decide who to start with. I think we'll start with Bliss. Okay. Um, <laughs> the apartment door has been opened, and you can kind of walk over and look in, and you see... The entire apartment is trashed. It's like hoarders level, but they're not hoarding anything. It's literally just trash and dust and odd broken things that are like being collected in here. It makes no sense. There's no rhyme yeah. or reason to any of it. And um, as you're looking in, you see this woman walked in and has grabbed onto a box. Uh, and this box looks it looks clean, it looks new, but it also has just these weird, like, symbols all the way around them. Um, and she turns with this, like, smile on her face and walks over and goes to hand you the box. I make sure not to step in the apartment because of the previous words of dust, and it started with the dust. Um... I will just hold out my hands and I'll say, um, what's your name, by the way? Hmm. Names no, don't matter. Not anymore. Not here. What about the name John Forbes? Doesn't ring a bell. Huh. All right, then. Well, if you would like, you can call me, uh, I know names don't matter, but if you would like, you can call me Cece. All right. What's in what's in this this box? I I don't know. I just know it is a gift. It's a gift for you. From who? Her eyes flick to like up as if she's looking upstairs. Looks lost and goes, "If you would excuse me." And she's trying to get out of the apartment. Uh well, just 
wait a second while I open this. I'm going to try to bar the like not bar the door but like stop her from getting it. out yes yeah i'm behind you too so and, i can you know yeah just wait one moment and has she given me the box yeah she has handed you the box um she's not taking very kindly to not being able to leave the apartment uh you see her visibly like getting agitated like she's just saying please move out of the way i just need out of the apartment I just and like wanted, the smile I've is gone i have some questions how long have you been living here I need my frying pan. And she's looking around. She's like, where did it, where, where is it? Where did oh, it go? It's over on the bed. Oh. <laughs> and turns and is walking back into the apartment to go find the frying pan that's not on the bed. I'm gonna shut the door behind her. And I'll turn around to Agent Raziel and just say, um, something's going on. With the, did you see all the dust? And, and, what the kids said downstairs about starting with the dust. Oh, Jesus. I'm going to get into my backpack. Um, I'm going to pull out like a full on gas mask that I'm just like putting on um, and and I only have one though. So um, yeah, but I'll, I'll hand you goggles you go in and, and stuff, but I bet you've got, you know, like just to just really cover. Yeah. Or do you want me to go in with you? I can crack the box out here. You want to go in? I'll go take a look around inside, sure. <clears throat> yeah, and I've got, like, the mask on. <sighs> open the door. I'll open the door. Yeah. Go yeah, through. I think I think as the door opens, we go into another flashback. Um, we see Max at their house. Mm. Um, what is this? What does this living quarters look like? Um... I guess it depends which one it is because they have two homes that they rent, two apartments. One is the one that they used to share with their uh, with their partner, and that one is dusty, unvisited, is pristine, has not changed how it looks whatsoever. The one that they live in is sparse, has no like sort of personality to it. It's very bare bones. There's like there's not even a couch. It's like there's just chairs, a table, um, maybe a TV set. But yeah, it looks like some looks like a a rundown extended stay hotel almost where there's just like no personality in it. Right. And what is a typical night in this in this house for Max? Um, watching TV, having a microwavable dinner. Um, and, uh, probably doing some sort of exercise, you know, before, before bed, it's like push-ups, there's, and there's a, uh, there is, you know, by the bed, one photo frame, but it's, it's turned away, like, it's, like, sort of facing the wall. But it's there when whenever they need it, whenever they need to look at it. But um, they're trying; they try not to. But inevitably, in the middle of the night, they always get up and grab that frame and look at a photo of uh, their old partner, and and then they uh, spend probably like twenty minutes every single night doing that in the middle, and then put it back down and try to get whatever sleep they can, if they do. And I, I think I think we see, like, a montage of this. We see it mm. night after night, after night, after night, alone. Mm -hmm. Oh, and, well, I should mention well, there is a... They, yeah. they've, they do have a hedgehog. <laughs> um, this like touching moment this whole scene yes it's like <laughs> but there's a hedgehog and so what appears like you see max as they're doing this they are speaking aloud they're like they're talking to someone but there's no one there and it's only that you realize that there is this little hedgehog who they eventually go down and speak to and feed and take care of um but but that's it. And then they spend all of their day like that's who they speak to. 
uh, Stella is her name. And I think we see this, you know, we see a few days of this, like, passing by. And then we see the burner phone light up. Mm. As, um, you are being contacted by your fellow agents. Right. I know that it's Agent Bliss. And, uh, I think I watch it ring. I know exactly how long before it goes to voicemail or whatever and I watch and I always stare until the very last moment I quickly grab it and pick up yeah and I think as you're picking it up that's when the door is opening in real time and mm -hmm. you are heading into this apartment um, as you are opening this door I would like for you to roll an athletics okay. roll or a dodge roll. Oh. Your choice. <laughs> <sighs> Biggest challenge. Enter the apartment. Yeah. <laughs> Open the door. Oh, shit. <laughs> We're on 82. I think these dice are getting put aside. Yeah. <laughs> After a 99 and an 82, you know, has happened. I should have set them aside when they hit 99. Yeah. Um, so I, I, yeah, I fail. Yeah, so Agent Bliss, you watch as um, Agent uh, Raziel opens the door, going to look in, but as soon as the door opens up, they are just slammed into by this woman. You see this woman is has completely changed in demeanor. It's like swinging, full fists, slamming oh, down. Shit. You're able to like block these hits, mm -hmm. but it is like scooting you backwards, and both of you like move across the hall and slam into the stair railing on the other side you see she's trying yeah. to basically like push you down before we enter combat we're gonna switch over to agent Layla. yeah yeah you walk over to the mirror um <laughs> kind of as they are moving over towards the door and you walk over and you're you're trying to get something out of your eye looking into this mirror before i can tell you what happens i first need to have you make a sanity roll Excellent. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Ooh, get into it. Classic. I got I totally succeeded. Um my thing is a 70, I rolled a 28. Awesome. Nice. So at first, nothing is strange about this at all. You you're trying to figure out what the hell is in your eye. You finally find it, kind of like push it out, and there's a moment where you're like, okay, I can rejoin the group. But as you're looking up at the mirror, you were so focused on yourself at first that you didn't realize that the reflection of what is behind you is not right. It's not correct at all. Um, it's a different place entirely. You're looking into a living room um, of some sort. And as you like glance behind you, you see you're in this apartment building. But as you look back at the mirror, you see like this 1920s style living room. You see this this couch, this coffee table, a large archway that probably leads into like some other room of the house. Um, very old, old light fixtures. But what do you do? Um, it's just in the mirror though. That's all I see, right? Correct. Against my better judgment, I'm going to touch the mirror. <laughs> <laughs> You're the kind of player I would like to have all the time. <laughs> <laughs> Go for it. Touch it. Yeah. <laughs> um, You reach up and go to touch the mirror and again it's like for a moment it seems fine and then you're realizing that the version of you inside the mirror is not reaching up the version of you inside the mirror is stock still you don't have a reflection of your hand and as you go and touch your hand does touch the glass but you almost feel a little bit of a resistance as if you could push through it as if it was <sighs> more of um like a film over it and as you're noticing this, this is when you hear the attack happening behind you. They, they uh, ah! yeah, yeah. yeah, slammed into the stair <laughs> railing and you kind of rip your hand away. As you rip your hand away, the scene behind you goes back to normal. Oh. 
Oh. I'll come back to and that. Now, <laughs> now we're going to enter combat. <laughs> okay, great. We see, we see Agent Layla rip her hand away. The scene go back to normal behind the mirror, and then you're able to turn around. What would you like to do? Ah, uh, wow. Um, can you explain to me one more time what is it that I see coming out of that door? Yeah, you see the woman just like a train coming out of this door. Yeah, just swinging fists wildly, uh, slamming into mm -hmm. Max, pushing them up against the stair railing. And like, it looks like she's trying to like push them over the railing. And Max yeah. has not had a chance to react to this yet. It happened so quick. Basically awesome. grappling, you yeah. Perfect. So you see uh, Layla, very trained, drop down to one knee, and she's going to take an aim at the woman's um, Achilles tendon. <laughs> so specific. It is. Because it's a good spot to shoot, man. It is, truly. Firearms at a 70, and I rolled a 57. Nice. Okay. Uh, so roll that damage 1d12. 11. Tendon getting 11. Shot. Holy shit. Oh my god. <laughs> bang, bang. So you hear uh, the rifle firing like echoes so weird off of like the stair railing itself like the metal everything is vibrating in here now at this point and um max you hear this gunshot and you feel this woman immediately like stop and crumble immediately just falls down to the floor screaming you hear this loud scream as she then rushes to grab onto her leg grab onto uh, basically the ankle that was completely shot off at this point, trying to, like, hold on and stop the bleeding, but you can see, like, that was a lot of damage. And... Uh, yeah. <laughs> you see screaming, screaming, and then the ping. Like, you hear one final ting as her head hits the stair railing, and she is dead. Is she solid? Like... She is, she is solid, yes. Great. I just wanted We to, needed that. We I just I that. had to good know. Job, I job. had to know. Delta Green, where you have to ask <laughs> after they die, are they still solid? <laughs> um wh What the hell? Layla? Are you I okay? Mean, yes, I'm fine, but I could have I could have gotten her off me. Jesus. Okay, we have more things to worry about over here. We're just killing civilians now. Um, that's up to her debate. She was attacking you. Uh, yeah, but you know I can handle myself at least a little bit. Okay, oh. I'm sorry. Something shook me. I saw something in a mirror while I was fixing my contact. This is ridiculous. It's fine. Oh, shit. And I heard screaming. What was I supposed to do? Just let you handle it like last time? I, look, I can... <clears throat> Anyway, it's fine. We uh, we've all we've all been there. Uh, man. Well, I'm I'm just I'm gonna I'm gonna do what I was gonna do. I just like walk away from the body and go into the apartment. Cecilia. And just like breathe. Yeah. <laughs> through a gas. Cecilia mask. has the, the breathe through the gas. It's just <laughs> all that yelling from a muted mask. Yeah. Like, <laughs> <it's> just... <laughs> Oh, what the hell? <laughs> I could take care of myself. <laughs> yeah. Uh, gosh. Cecilia's cracking the box open if she can. It's gonna happen. It's a safe yeah. box. It's a normal box. Boxes yeah. are safe. Boxes are fun and safe. They are gifts. Just yeah. like mirrors. Yes. Yeah. Well, Cecilia, you are opening up the box and you see a one item inside. You see one uh, of those like handheld pocket mirrors <laughs> there it goes Sorry. there it is <laughs> i was trying so hard to <laughs> interact with this box knowing that i knew what was inside <laughs> thanks twitter thanks um... twitter <laughs> uh i heard just heard my one of my partners say something about mirror fuckery so i think i'm going to Box. <laughs> yep. <laughs> Immediately he just closes it. Should this be helpful later? 
Yeah, and um, Max, as you are moving towards the apartment, as you're looking up to look in, like, the open doorway, uh, you see fingers on the doorframe itself. And as you begin walking, the fingers disappear. Oh, hell no. Mm -mm. Mm Mm-mm. Mm-mm, no. Oh, wow. Okay. (laughs) Here's what's gonna happen. Um... (laughs) I take out one collie stick. I got the hammer in the other hand. <clears throat> and I'm going in just sort of like arm, you know, at the ready with them ahead of me and eyes are glued as I'm going in. Um, I'm even going to like, since the door is open at this point, I'm going to like knock, I'll knock with the hammer and be like, and say, Hello? You're like coming cre- in. Yeah, the creaking of the building. I'm coming in, and if you try and charge me, come at me in any way, I just want to let you know I will retaliate. I'd rather not. I'm I'm not coming in here with the intent to harm. Okay, I'm walking in. I'm sure you guys just hear me going through this whole yeah. thing. <laughs> Yeah, uh, what is Agent Layla doing while this is happening? I think Ag- Agent Layla is a little remorse of the move that she made. She heard her fellow agent kind of struggle. She took an action and felt bad after, like, you know, she got a little bit razzed from Raziel. So she kind of turns back to the mirror um, and puts her hand up again, and she's going to touch the <gasps> mirror. Can you touch glass? Mmm. Mmm. I'm going to hold my gun to it and point the, the gun to the mirror. The handgun this time, not the not the shotgun. She like pulls out a handgun. So point it, like pointing it at yourself in the mirror? Yeah. Or just against the glass? Against the glass. Okay. Um, yeah, you hear like the tink of the, the gun up against the glass. Um, your reflection seems to be your own. What the hell is going on in this place? Everything all right? Gonna, it, something happened in this freaking mirror. It showed a living room that looked like it would. Like, it showed a living room. I'm in a hallway. Is it living like, room? Oh, I I believe you. It, things are weird. Things are going on here. I'm not exactly yeah. sure. But when I touched the mirror, it was like I could push through it. I will just watch Agent Layla just touched the mirror as she was intending to do before I spoke up just to see if I see anything you're you're seeing agent Layla say that she could probably go through the mirror as she is touching it yeah well um I mean for what it's worth the civilian kind of said something weird about seeing your ending in a mirror on that note, she flips the, the gun to the, the butt of it and just breaks the mirror. Hell yeah, you smash the back of this gun into the mirror itself. You see it, like, um, crack and shatter. And as it's shattering, you, you're you hearing it, like, plink down to the floor. And inside of the sound of the shattering, you swear you hear, Mommy? Oh, hell no. <laughs> Oh, you just, you see Layla go, Cassie? Uh, Layla, are are you all right? Oh, what? Um, fine. Um, yeah, it's nothing. They're just voices. I I thought I heard something. Why don't you put your gun away for a second and just take a couple of minutes to just breathe? This has been a lot it's been maybe like 15 minutes we still have three hours to take care of this job roger that puts the gun away puts her other larger gun away and like sits on the stairwell looking out yeah and i think as you sit down we kind of like almost like just get closer and closer and closer to your face until we cut to um another flashback um what what scene would you like to play out with uh, you and your daughter? 
Oh, I think it's um, Sonia picking her daughter up from school, um, dressed in full like agent uniform. Um, it kind of zooms in on her collar. She has just a speck of blood on her, not enough to be noticeable, but just something there. And she's waiting for her daughter. Um, you see Sonia like fiddling with the, the ring again. Um, zoom in on the diamond. The diamond's cracked in it. Um, and it's actually like the ring is kind of almost look like it bent. Like she like, you probably think that she like threw it or something like that. And she still wears it, but it's, you know, it's, it's messed up. But her eight year old daughter comes running out to her, giving her a big old hug and kind of like flat, like montage to them walking on the street and then walking up to kind of a white picket, like house. Like it's just a beautiful, like Americana house single story, nice little garden. Like everything's perfect. Like it looks like Hollywood, like movie back lot perfect. Um, you know, her daughter goes running into the kitchen to try to grab a snack and you just see them kind of like doing the afternoon thing, like trying to get her daughter to do homework and um, kind of walk by um, like a wall of pictures and it's Sonia um, with like a wedding picture, black and white wedding picture. Um, but that frame is also kind of just ever so slightly cracked. Like it looks like somebody tried to fix it. Um, but then it's all pictures of Cassie and Sonia as Cassie is growing up and stuff like that. So not too many voices. You don't really hear her except you hear her say mama, just like you kind of heard when the glass was breaking. Um, and there's a mirror that every time they pass by, like you could just see Cassie getting older when they pass by the mirror and stuff like that. And I think there's like a little moment as you're thinking about this and as you're, um, as the camera, it's more for the camera than it is for the character. We see this mirror as, you know, Cassie's passing by and growing older and older. And we see one little flash of a faceless standing in the mirror instead. And then we are back to present time. Mm. Um, Max, you are inside of this apartment. Yeah. yeah. Each footstep, you can see you're leaving prints in the dust, the thick layer. It almost looks like pollen that you are stepping into. Looking around, you look to the left where the fingers kind of disappeared to, uh -huh. and you see a kitchen. Um, there's no one in it. And you see there is a center bar and you're kind of glancing around. Yeah. You don't see anyone. <clears> hmm. <throat> I'm gonna go take a closer look in the kitchen. Yeah, you... I'll, uh, open up cupboards or whatever. Um, actually, are there any, like, photos or things around of the, of the lady who ran out? Uh, not... Unless you want to do some digging, you see like, you see some frames occasionally. They're all broken, like glass is, glass is shattered uh, okay. everywhere in here. Yeah. Um, yeah. Even I'll, like I'll going into the kitchen. Rummaging. Okay. Yeah. Uh, going into the kitchen too, like the glass on the like microwave or the stove, it's all shattered. All glass oh. in this apartment is shattered, and that is something you're noticing very quickly. Oh. Um, okay. Kind of like pushing through some of this debris and dirt, kind of kicking up mm -hmm. dust in some places. Uh, you you can find some old photos. They look very old, though. You know this call had to have come in like today or yesterday yeah. at the yeah, like yeah, yeah. latest. These photos look like they have been this way for months, maybe maybe over a year, like torn and weathered and. Mm. wrinkled and the photos themselves though do they look modern or do they yeah yeah they, they look modern um and okay. you recognize the person in the photo as okay, the person who attacked match. you okay yeah um i just sort of look at some of the photos and just like who are you and i sort of set it down saying i'm sorry Sorry, we can help you. And um, 
I'm just going to continue sort of going through each room to see if there's anything I can find that points to anything, you know, points to what happened here, any sort of like item. Um, you know, we've dealt with mysterious things in the past. Like we don't know how everything is explained, right? Like we've done this before and I'm just at this point, I'm like, what, what, what caused this? And then I remember that she said something about a basement is where she saw something. I mean, we're on the second floor right now, right? Yes. Um, she had mentioned um, seeing her end in uh, the basement. And she also mentioned, don't go upstairs. It's waiting. Yeah. 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 So. Yeah. 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 Um, so I, I would like to, I'd still like to sort of search the apartment in case there's something like some sort of like item that stands out, you know, I don't know, spooky talisman, I, anything. Yeah. Um, yeah, if there's something out of sorts. Make a search roll for that. Okay. New what dice. are our other agents doing while that is happening? Yeah. New dice. Good idea. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I think that I'm, you said that there's writing on the box, right? Yes. I would love to, like, analyze that writing and see if it's, you know, this, if, if it's of a specific language that I've, you know, seen before. Um, it's not even about truly being able to read it, but, like, recognizing is it kind of close to another language I might know. Do you have anything in a cult? Um, I believe <laughs> that I do. <laughs> uh, yeah. Fun stuff. Yeah, yeah. I All right, go ahead and roll a cult. And what is uh, Agent Layla doing? Still sitting on the steps or anything different? Yeah, Layla's still sitting on the steps. I think she's probably looking at the shards of mirror, trying to figure out how she heard her daughter's voice through all of that. Dang it, no. I failed. By seven. <laughs> <laughs> so sad. And the search roll? Oh, yeah, I succeeded. Okay. Nice. So all happening at the same time, uh, we have Agent Bliss kind of like looking at um, this box, looking at the writing on it. You are sure it is not a language. Mm -hmm. um, these symbols are something else and you're not really able to place anything else about them. Just that it's, it's not a language recognized by anyone other than people like you. Um, and looking around the apartment, you are finding every room is like this. It's not just this living room. Every room is covered in this weird pollen dust stuff, and you're not finding a source for it. Um, as you look into like the bathroom mirror, completely shattered, uh, glass scattered all over the sink, all over the floor, um, the windows are covered. Um, they appear to be covered with anything they could cover it with, whether it just be like a blanket or um, tape even up against it. The windows are covered. The more you're walking around this apartment, the more you're you're realizing there's no chance to see your reflection anywhere in here. Mm -hmm. um, and that's really all you can really find in here. There is okay. a little bit of a um, kind of a scare as you walk into the bedroom and you see what looks like uh, a person standing, but you see it's like a coat on a rack and there's this moment Every of like- Every time. Yeah. Oops. Yeah. Yeah. And I think I'm like, damn it. And you're like, even though I'm alone, I'm just like, I just like hit the, the coat down, <laughs> like annoyed. I'm like, Captain Coat scaring me. It's always like that. I mean, at least it's not the middle of the night, but. Okay. All right. Um, I'm going to uh, turn back around, seeing as I didn't find a source, but uh, as I walk out and I'm like, uh, hey guys, don't look at reflections, I think. And I think as that is happening, um, as Agent Layla is looking at these shards of glass. <laughs> <laughs> um, I would like for you to make another sanity roll for me, please. Yes, I shall. 
<laughs> oh, this time I failed. 97. Ooh. All right, you are going to lose three points of sanity. As oh. you, you're looking into this shard, and it's almost like you're... You're trying to figure it out. You're thinking so hard about everything that happened in the past three minutes. Just three minutes. And you're kind of like turning the shard here and there. And you're not even sure when it changed. It's just now you're looking into that living room again. You're able to kind of move the shard and look all around you. And you're realizing it is as if you're sitting on like the couch. You're able to look over, you see, you turn it one way and you see a fireplace and you see a huge, gaudy, gold-framed mirror on the wall. Mm -hmm. and you can see that with the shard of glass and you kind of move it back over, move it all around. As you move it to look up at the ceiling, you see a person, but that's kind of a difficult way to describe them. You see all black suit gray face, like a porcelain mask, melted into their skin, completely bald, looking down at you from the ceiling, facing you, but their limbs are backwards, holding on to the ceiling itself, like a spider. It reminds you so much of a spider. You see the limbs are too long, and they just stretch over, and you see, as you're looking up at it, the limbs almost, like, extend to let the face come down closer and closer and closer and you see the gray face just kind of turn even though there are no eyes you can swear it is looking into you and as it's getting closer and closer and closer you hear something it's like a spark just inside of your ear and as soon as you hear this the entire shard of glass shatters and disintegrates like a like a like a windshield how a windshield just completely cracks away it, it falls like dust out of your hands there's something so familiar about this being that for a moment you can't help but think of like the greys you can't help but think of like alien beings in general but that's ridiculous because this that's not what this is you know what this is. You've seen it before. You just can't place it. And then you hear, you're, you're running out of time, time, just inside of your ear. Oh, what As the, the last, you know, the last piece crumbles. Uh, agent? Hey, uh, guys, maybe don't look at reflections as I'm walking in. What? <laughs> Too late. What? Um, Why? What happened? Yeah, I, I, I saw a living room. It's very like 1920s ornate, but there was something that was on the ceiling. It looked like it was bald. It had um, like kind of like this like weird, like almost like the Phantom of an Opera. I don't know. Mask maybe it was a burned porcelain into mask. the face? Yeah. Yeah. But the limbs were like turned what? backwards. Like they were like a spider coming down. I, it's like I've, I've seen this before. I it just, I, I can't figure out how I've seen it. You guys, we're running out of time. We really need to figure this out before it's too late. Okay. Um. Um. Lady said said she saw her end in the basement, but she also said not to go upstairs. That something was up there. I don't know. I, you know, obviously that seems like a warning, but clearly we're here to find out what's causing this. I, it, yeah. it might be upstairs. I think we need and to find. And we what's... have to get rid of it. And at so this let's point, go upstairs. You hear the cracking of bones. And you look over and you see the woman that was up against the stair railing standing up. Oh, no, no, oh, no. No, 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 no. You see she grabs onto the frying pan that was placed on the floor and pulls it back up as well. Uh, and she is standing a little lopsided from the crack of uh, her wound. Oh, no, what no, What would you no, like no, to do? No, 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 no. Oh, fuck this. I'm gonna go up to, I'm gonna go to, to rush her and, like, beat her back down. Uh, no! <laughs> <laughs> with sure. poly sticks and oh. hammer why not can can i also do something what would you can like I to do crack open the box bring out the mirror and show it to her Ooh. as agent raziel's charging over okay is there anything agent layla would like to do 
I have my gun out trained on her head just in case Raziel misses. Cool. <laughs> Alright, no awesome. So, uh, Agent Raziel, I want you to make your roll first. Melee weapons? Yes. Success. Cool. I think you both kind of rush her at the same time as she's lifting this up and goes to take a step forward, but you hear that crunch again as she's trying to walk forward and just can't. And um, both of you rush up. You are, like, bringing... I'll let you describe your attack for sure, but as you are, like, coming up to get ready to do this, uh, Agent Bliss just whips out that mirror and pushes it into her direction, and you see she looks at it. Um... Go ahead and describe that attack before I describe what happens. Yeah, the attack was going to be a one-two sort of swing, uh, diagonal swing at the head, collie stick, and then hammer follow-up. <laughs> Rad. Um, Beautiful. Yeah. Yeah, so you see, looking into this mirror, for the first time, her eyes focus. Uh, it's no longer like she is looking through anything. She is looking at that mirror and she is seeing something that she finds to be so glorious. Oh no. You see a smile across her face and you see, even though she's bringing up this fire, the frying pan, there is a half a second of hesitation before her eyes snap back to the attack coming at her with pure aggression, as if she has to defend this world with her life and she goes to swing and smack we hear the first hit smack we hear the second one she spins around and that frying pan ting against the stair railing once more and you see as she hits it she flips over it oh and as she flips over and lands on the stairs down below spatters into that weird paste <gasps> no no yeah. no damn it i'm like looking over the railing yeah all right this place sucks yeah 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 okay mm -hmm. uh <clears throat> um okay so let's try here mm. oh my god we Why people come to us smiling? seeing stuff you know what yeah. i don't know she clearly see i don't want to see that mirror I'm like, I'm like, kind of like looking, not little pointing at what's in your hand. Yeah, I, 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 it's turned away from me at all times. It's... She looked happy when she looked in there. Um, <sighs> it, it's gotta, it's gotta like pull you in somehow. Did, did, what did, did you see anything that, that you cared about when you looked in there, Layla? I didn't see anything I cared about, but what I heard it was my, my daughter. Yeah, no, no, yeah. You don't let that pull you. You can't let, can't let that pull you in. I that that was it was. It looked like she was happy. It was like you know, like traps you or something or something. But, but what's important is that uh, uh if we um see, see someone else like her uh previous to this still alive, you know, perhaps in a in a seeing stuff, hallucinating. You gotta try and keep them alive because this. This is the whatever next stage, and and I don't like I don't want to see bodies turn into that shit anymore. Agreed. Okay. Um. Okay. Are, are we going? Are we going to go upstairs, or are we going to go to the basement, or? I think we should go upstairs. And take care of yeah. this thing. Yeah. Let's find this. Um. Make sure you don't get any of this dust. Shit. Her her place is covered in this whatever dust pollen uh, that's in there, just make sure you don't get that stuff on you. Don't inhale yeah. it. We have our PPE on stuff, so, but you gave us it first, so. Yeah. Um, All right. I feel like our, what's his name, JF, might be this mask thing. Yeah. Yeah. Also, it seems like it's not human. It almost feels like it's like an alien of some sort. So I just be careful. You don't know where that thing's going to be. It was on the ceiling when I was looking in the mirror. Yeah. Okay. I, I saw it earlier. That's target target practice. Um, it was in the pool and it was standing on the bottom of the pool, but it was like. 
was it was like a, an image almost like transposed on top of like the, the it, was, it was weird Wait, you saw it too i did see it for only a second or so okay i thought it was right. just uh me. hold on i forgot to do this earlier and i'm going to uh hand each of them and i do this every single every single mission we go on i hand you each a gps tracking device nice I don't want to lose track of you. Yeah. Copy. Put it in um, my lab small, coat pocket. You know, yeah. Hmm. All right. Um, let's just go upstairs with our wits about us. Yeah. All right. Okay. Um, All heading upstairs? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. All right. About halfway up the staircase, you're noticing the dust is thicker and thicker, almost as if it's mm. like spilling down from oh, Jesus. up top. And, um... I think... Yeah. <laughs> as we get... Everyone's uh, like, hold on, actually. Yeah, uh... we're like, wait a second. Wait a second. <laughs> uh, I think that I do... Although there's... I, I don't know if I would actually have, like, stronger protection for breathing, but I think I just say uh, to Agent... Raziel and just I'll just be like, I'm sorry that I got us into this. I didn't I didn't know it was going to be like this. Look. There's no way we can actually know what we're getting into. And I know that I just as long as nothing happens to you both, it's fine. Just stay safe, please. And don't, don't, don't rush into anything. Don't, just don't rush into anything. You too. <laughs> I'll go first. <laughs> I'm like, keep <eight> moving. Yeah. <laughs> and. The further up you're going, the more it smells like mold and water damage. There's this must, this like almost earthy, deep, deep earth. All these smells are hitting you. And as you are kind of pushing up over this staircase, you see this entire third floor is in complete disarray. But not in a way as if it was smashed or destroyed by any normal means. You see doors sideways in walls, just where they're not supposed to be, but almost like they were built there. You see uh, half a staircase pushed up into the ceiling. You see chairs that look like they've melted into the floor itself. Something is not right here. Reality is shifted and you feel as if that's happening to your mind. You feel like your mind is melting into the floor. Your mind is pushing into the door. There's a moment where you have to regrip yourself, and I need all of you to make a sanity roll, please. Oh, man. Okay. Shit. Oh, my God. I failed by one point. I got a 33, which is a critical success, I believe, for me. Amazing. So, the three of you walk up you're seeing the sight before you and agent bliss you are looking around at everything do you say anything mm. oh, i don't think so i think i'm trying not to take more breath than normal <laughs> speaking requires breathing or <laughs> aspirating at least yeah So you are looking around at all of this and then there's this moment where you're taking it all in and then you look over to see your fellow agents and they're not beside you. Max? As you call that and go to look around, you see your brother uh, sitting in a chair that is melted into the floor. Uh, And he's sitting there. His legs are also melted into the floor at this point, like like he's a part of this place. And he sits there, he seems to be cleaning his gun. And he just says, 
Max isn't here anymore. Where did you... What did you do with them? Why do you assume I did? Uh, what are you doing here? Mm, no, no, see, I belong here. And he points down to his legs that are melted into the floor. I am a part of something. What are you doing here? Trying to save you and everyone else here. Well, and he finishes cleaning the gun and grabs, grabs it to hold it out to you and says, good luck with that. You know that I'm shit with these. Don't you want to save me? I'll reach for it and grab it. As you grab onto it, he, like, reaches up with the other hand and grabs onto your wrist and just, like, pulls you closer to him. And with that, we're gonna cut over to Agent Layla. You have walked up and seen this scene before you. Everything melted into everything else that doesn't quite make sense. And then you hear coming from directly behind you, you you hear your daughter. Uh, she says, what are you doing here? What are you doing here, sweetie? As you turn around, you are seeing the living room that you had seen in the mirror. You are standing in the middle of this living room now, like the scene has just completely changed. She's sitting on the, the couch, kind of like uh, just moving her legs. I, I... I think I've always been here. Baby doll, you've not been here before. Why are you being weird? And she just kind of, like, looks down at uh, this, like, book that she's looking at. What are you reading? Just this, and turns it around, and the pages are just reflective. I like gonna go reach out to close the book. Oh, what are you doing? You can't be looking at that. That's not for you. Fine. You always say that about all your work stuff. Yeah, I know because my work stuff is uh, not for children's eyes. Do you have to go back to work right now? I do. But what if you just stayed here with me instead? So much as I would love to spend all the time with you, I need to finish what I'm doing so that we can go on that vacation I promised you. But this is a vacation. And she this... kind of like points to this huge house. It's a huge house. Yeah, it's we a have huge, huge scary ourselves. house. It's a huge scary house though. Mommy doesn't like to be scared, remember? It's not scary. Oh, you're a big brave girl, that's why. So what do you have to do? I have to solve something. Can you help me? Sure, like our puzzles? Just like our puzzles. Okay, what's the what's the puzzle? The puzzle is there are pieces of things missing and I am trying to understand why there is a certain person potentially following us. That sounds really boring. I think we should play something else. What do you want to play? I want to play hide and seek. Hide and seek. You know, mommy's scared of that, though. But this won't even be a scary one. This won't be a scary one at all. And she's like standing up and uh, like grabbing onto your wrists, like as if that's going to convince you to play. And she's like, "This that won't even it won't even be a scary one. I'll I'll go hide first. I'll hide first. OK. And she turns and is starting to head towards the open doorway. I grab her and pick her up. What are you doing? I'm scared. Don't leave and mommy she alone. Puts her little hands like on your cheeks and is like, there's nothing to be afraid of. Are you sure? Yes. Where's daddy? 
there's a little head cock, and for a moment you see the face falter just a little bit. Oh. Where's Daddy? It falters again, and you can see uh, the limbs kind of just starting to change just a little bit, and it's faltering. Stop! I don't like this. I don't like it. I... This is so heart rating, basically. Like, just like, you know, how a little girl, like little kids, you kind of like toss the kids. I'm going to do a light toss and I'm going to scream, where's your daddy? As you do that, you see just almost like you hear a shatter almost. It's just this explosion up in front of you and landing down before you, you see one of these faceless standing in this suit with this just gray faceless face just looking at you head cocked as if it just doesn't understand and with that we're gonna cut to agent Razale. you walk up into this room you see the same scene and you look around at the agents beside you and they're there they're standing they are staring into the room as well what would you like to do you guys ready you uh you do not get a response hello earth to layla bliss (laughs) doctor you are my bliss hello hello do you like do anything to try to get their attention like physically? Yeah, I'm just or... like in front of their in front of their face like, "Hello." As you wave your hand in front of Layla's face between your fingers. It's not when your hand passes by either side, but between your fingers as it's going, you see that faceless mask. Oh no, fuck that. I just go and punch him in the face. <laughs> As soon as you see this, you just come back and slam into yeah. uh, what looks like Agent Layla. And as she's stumbling backwards, you see with each step that she's stumbling, a little bit of the appearance changes, like one step at a time, back into this faceless. And then you look over and Agent Bliss is no longer there at all, um, as this faceless has shown itself, basically. Um, And that is what you see, too, Agent Bliss, as you are pulled closer to your brother. The closer that you get, the more you're able to see. It's just that faceless mask. And you all appear to be in different places, however weird that is. And I will say, Max, as you look at this GPS tracker... Yeah, that's what I was going to do next, yeah. You are all still in this room. You are all still together, but you're you're looking around and you, you can't see anyone. And all of yeah. you here, all of you here coming from this faceless, even though you see the jaw moving, but there's no there's no mouth. Lips don't part. You just can see the jaw moving and you hear the voice clearly as if it is in your head. You hear It is my understanding that you're here to clear an unnatural infestation. And the voice is cool, but also dark. Almost like dual vocal cords are being used. Um, Maybe more than two voices, but it's just all happening at once. And you hear, is Is that that true? true? Yeah. Yeah, that's... That's our job. And at this point, the other two, you're hearing... Max's voice, even though you can't see them. That's our job. That's what the real, the person that you're impersonating right now, that's what she would uh, remind me. She tries to remind me all the time, but sometimes it's harder to get through. But right now I know this is our job. And yeah, we are going to stop whatever the fuck's going on right here. So why don't you maybe help us out? Why are you here? What are you doing? You can clear the infestation in this building, but how do you keep it from happening again? I'm only curious. What is your plan? How do you stop me? Who are you? You have seen me before. I am behind you in every mirror. I am in every dream, watching, waiting for you to see me so that I can collect you. 
I am a collector. You see, I collect places, people. It pleases me. Well, look, you can't be here collecting humans, okay? You just like this is not this is not your place. This is this is where we're at. Just tell us who are you? Are you even from this world? You cannot kill me. I am not made of flesh and bone. And being from this world is irrelevant, but I am from some place different, some place that is a reflection of this world. Okay, well, I, I, can you just go to some other fucking reflection? Like, I don't care about other worlds. Just leave mine the fuck alone. You have to make a choice, agents. A choice that will end in your death either way. If I am being truthful, you were dead the moment you stepped into this building, but you can put down your guns and weapons and join the others in the basement for a death that will mean something. Or you can try to fight me, but I assure you that will not go the way you want it to. Yeah, that's what they all say. And at this point, I think you blink, and the faceless is gone, and the three of you stand before each other again. And this dusty... My hands are up. I feel <laughs> I'm like... I have my gun, like, out, ready to, like, shoot the thing. But I'm, I... like, looking at y'all. Like, <laughs> like... Yeah. I don't even know. I, th I think Bliss has... Her gun, the handgun that she started out with, but it's pointed towards her as if she's like, like not pointed backwards, but oh. yeah, she's like grabbing the barrel of it. Like it was handed to her, but she just immediately like sees you both. <laughs> Bliss, Layla, huh? tell me yeah. to, tell me, wait, yeah, Layla, what? Tell me something only you know. I, I, um, only something I know. Um, I know that you have a hard time with your partner. I was going to say the hedgehog thing, but... Jesus Christ, all right, fuck, it is young. As much as I kind of wish it wasn't right now, okay? Oh, I'm sorry, just it's, it's something that we've all shared about <clears throat> ourselves, and I, I I know that that was a mm -hmm, thing. Mm -hmm. Yeah, all what, right, I got it. What happened? Uh, I, 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 I was here, I was here with, with both of you, but it wasn't you, it wasn't you, it was, it was the weird, it was the faceless thing, right? Okay, yeah, and, and, yeah. And so I, I, you know, I punched the shit out of you, which I gotta say was a little cathartic in the process, too. Um, and, and... Who did you punch? Then, I don't think that's... No, it matters. Important oh, it matters. it matters. It matters. You know what? It may, it may have been, it may have been... <clears throat> Anyway, turned into the faceless, the faceless mask, the one that you guys have mentioned that I, I, I hadn't seen it before, and then I saw it, and then it started talking to me about, about not being able to, to leave, that we had to make some decision, either we have to go die with the others in the basement, so I assume there are others in this fucking basement, or that, that we would have to fight it, and that it's in our reflections, like in, in the mirrors, that it's always been there, and... I don't know, some some otherworldly, but whatever. He thinks we can't fight it. I'd say we'd have to try. I'm not fucking dying here. None of us are dying. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. what, what about y'all? What did you see? Uh, Sebastian. My brother. It's fine. It... Oh, shit. Yeah. It's It's fine. He wanted me to save him, but he didn't really give me any hints on how to do that. So it's just like him. I mean, <sighs> Cecilia, I a... that wasn't real, you know. It seemed pretty real. I feel that. Mine was my daughter. She wanted to play hide and seek. She kept looking at a book of mirrors. But I think I figured something out, and I don't. I, don't um, I have a hypothesis or an idea here. 
Yeah. Oh. Every time I started screaming at my daughter, the image started to go away, like as if it was disturbed by sound. Oh. In oh. fact, when I screamed something, it changed out of my daughter's form and into its true form. If all of these people are seeing their end, I'm wondering if a sound can disturb them long enough to realize that it's not real. What did can you? I, uh, oh, yeah. go, ahead. go ahead. What did you yell? And she looks down at her ring. Where's your daddy? Um, okay. I have a question that I don't know. This might not make any sense, but I'm looking for patterns. I mean, hit us with it. So, Layla, when you screamed, I'll ask this, and this is your perception. Was the faceless mask thing, was it weaker when it looked like it was your daughter? Or was it, I, I don't know. Do we really want to scare these people out of thinking they're seeing their end? Or do we want to scare this thing into showing its true self to us? And... Am I... Is it easier for us to take it out when it appears to us as the people we care about or is it stronger when it's you know in our heads like that well i don't know about you but i'm pretty sure i've seen this before and not in here huh yeah i get that sense too so if we were to keep it to just us three, I think we would be screwed. But if we can get more people to see what we're seeing, maybe we can get them to at least help us. Okay. I think, you know, you know this gun that I have and I take, I take the gun and I'm like flopping it around. It's like just terrible, like absolutely could go off at any point. This gun is not good. I'm not good with them. So like, Maybe I could just use it and fire it a couple times and just like over there and over there and over there, and, like, you know, up in the air, whatever, and be loud. And what if you try to get these people to safety? Me? Yeah. In the basement? Yeah. No, they're, they believe, they believe what they see. Uh, and that's the problem. We don't know their lives. We don't know how to shatter their reality. We don't know anything about them. And I'm sure this mirror probably isn't helping. I think the mirror is what made that lady kind of, you know, go to her end. Is everything around us still all messed up or is it looking normal? It's yeah, it's all up. messed up. Okay. Uh, well, here's a thought. Do you think if we look through that mirror, we could see where we're going? That's an idea. Uh... I mean, where where are we going, I guess, is a better question. I mean, What's, where's the basement? You want to go to where all these people are? Mm -hmm. He said that's where we go to die with them. Or, or we can fight him. And I think that we need to go up to fight. Okay. I don't really think... I thought we ruled out the reflection thing, but if you think it would help... Well, I just, it's more that I just, I don't know where to go right now. Yeah, yeah and, how, and to be honest to with up. you, yeah, that's what I was just going to say. Looking at all the doors are not where we think they're going to be. So maybe going up means going through the mirror? Here, I'll, I'll, I'll just look. I'll, I'll do it. I'll put my hand out, reach out for the mirror. Yeah. And you guys, and you guys have my back. And you're right yeah, here. Yeah, always. I, I grab onto Raziel's hand, other hand, and so yeah. I'll uh, I'll grab it, and I'm kind of looking wherever the stairs are. In this messed up 
So I'm kind of turned towards that and I'm going to try and like look at the mirror to try and like look behind me to see if things appear normal or anything. Yeah, you are looking at this mirror, looking around at your surroundings, and you are seeing this area the way that it is supposed to be. Yep, yep, guys, guys, I can I can I can see where I wish we were uh in this mirror. It's 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 all it's all normal. It's all normal. Um oh. You want to see if you can come with me? I'm going to go, I'm going to find wherever the stairs are. Okay. And I will take a step wherever it seems to be. Do I feel myself? Do I actually move up? You absolutely do. Yes. Okay. And like, I sort of look down at, at Layla, if she's still holding my hand, sort of motion to where I am. Can you follow me? Yes. See, see, if, you know. Yeah. 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 With, with this guidance, it feels so bizarre. It feels like you are trying to go up a staircase in complete darkness where you, you, you feel your toes like hit the next mm. step and you step down and it is very, you're disoriented as you're moving up these stairs, but you're using this mirror to guide you and you are able to head up. Agent Bliss? Yeah, yeah, right behind you. All right. I'm following directly behind. Got this. I hate that I'm going back up. Uh, so you guys watch my back, please, literally. Uh, yeah. Doing this backwards. <laughs> just like going backwards up the stairs. Uh, yeah, and I'd like to sort of just make our way up then. Yeah, and as you're going up and you are using this mirror to kind of look, you are probably like moving it around occasionally to check what's behind you as well as you are moving up and you do see as you are probably like four or five steps away from the top you see a faceless standing oh like waiting at, up the, top at the top of the top. stairs yeah looking down at you all right uh guys it's up there whatever that mouse thing is it's up there it's the top right. of these steps I, I don't know what's going to happen, but <clears throat> we can try noise. We can try, I think, just shattering their reality. I don't know. It, it... I've got a idea. I have some mm -hmm. equipment here that might help us at least okay. give us an advantage here. Um. Yeah. I'm going to pull out my flashbang. Okay. It's a it's the damage is just done, so it's just going to give it a, a second to wooby wooby mm -hmm. I assume, and that'll give us a tactical advantage here at least. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, um I think as you pull this out, like all of you kind of make eye contact for a moment, like mm -hmm. whatever is going to happen, it is going to happen as soon as you set this off. Yeah. And what what are each of you thinking right now? Like, what is, if these are your last thoughts before this happens, <laughs> what are you, you thinking about? If. If. Um. <clears throat> uh, I, Max is, is, is just thinking I'm, just thinking I'm not gonna screw this up. I'm not leaving this loose end. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think uh, Sonia pulls out, she has dog tags, and if you look at it, like, can't resume into her hand, it's actually the name of her, um, her ex-husband, and a locket of her daughter, so she kind of does, like, a quick prayer holding onto it. Um, I think that Cecilia is her mind flashes to her brother um, and then flashes to just literally minutes ago maybe like 30 minutes ago when they were all just standing outside talking and just the idea of like she was the one she was the one that brought them there um, they have to get out of this like they have to Yeah, 
And what do we do with this flashbang? <laughs> Toss it uh, at the faceless, see what happens. Yeah, I think Max kind of like points exactly where it is in the mirror, yeah. you know, and you toss it. You hear it clink against the floor, and then this sudden just loud noise, bright white. And cinematically, the camera stay the, the screen stays white. It stays white and there is a moment where we hear something that Max said just a few minutes ago. They believe what they, they believe see. What they see. And we flash to Agent Bliss arriving on the scene. But there are no cop cars there. There are no ambulances, there are no fire trucks. Agent Bliss pulls up, gets out of the car, and walks over and begins talking to no one on the sidewalk. <laughs> we see... We see Max looking at the burner phone that is not ringing. We see Max pick up the phone, answer it, looking into a mirror where the faceless stands, giving you the task. We see Agent Layla on the drive to the place, to the site that you were called at. Looking in the rearview mirror, you see the faceless sitting in the back seat. They believe what they see. They don't realize their reality is shattered. And that is the end no. of our one shot. <laughs> oh my god. Yes. So oh my god. god. It was so good. Hey. Hey, are you okay? They believe what they see, uh, and that's the problem. We don't know their lives. We don't know how to shatter their reality. We don't know anything about them. You're not making sense. Was are you hurt? the faceless mask thing, was it weaker when it looked like it was your daughter? Or was it, I, I don't know. 911, what's your emergency? I just found some people. They were wandering around in the street, and it's the middle of the night, and um, they're saying something about, they're saying something about a faceless? You know, I'm Josephine McAdam, and you can just follow me on socials to see, you know, what else I'm doing. It's at J-C-V-I-M, as in manic, uh, everywhere. <laughs> Right on, right on. Um, I'm Cynthia Marie. You can also find me on the socials uh, at Synth Dancer on the tweets and all the other places. And unfortunately, somebody has Synth Dancer on Instagram, so it's different. Uh, Cynthia <laughs> underscore underscore Marie on Instagram. Um, but yeah, find me there and you'll see what I'm up to. Um, Y'all are great. Uh, yeah, my name is Lexi, otherwise known as Black Girl Mage. You can find me also on Twitter under that name, uh, Twitter and Twitch. Um, but yeah, I don't know what I'm doing at any point in time. I just move through space, uh, and <laughs> <laughs> honestly, everyone else knows what I do before I do, so. You're incredible, Carrie. You're Absolutely. a very good storyteller. Thank you so much. I don't I take compliments so well, so this is, this is not going to be a two-sided conversation. <laughs> <laughs> Oh no, I'm scared. I'm scared. <laughs> Your hedgehog has <laughs> no face. <laughs>